When goal-directed behavior fails to achieve its desired outcome, a common response is to try again, possibly with additional effort. But if repeated attempts all fail, then many animals will often change their strategy and stop trying. How do brains of animals detect that actions are consistently failing to achieve their goal, and how do they make the animal switch to a passive behavioral state? We use larval zebrafish to answer this question. At six days of age, these animals already have a relatively complex behavioral repertoire. They are small, transparent, and can be genetically modified. We can use microscopy techniques such as light sheet imaging to image live brain activity. By combining this with virtual reality environments, we search for neural correlates of giving up or futility-induced passivity. Like many fish, larval zebrafish swim in order to maintain their position in flowing water. We aimed to disrupt this goal-directed sensory motor behavior and make it impossible for the fish to achieve the goal of swimming, that is, to move forward following a motor command from the brain. Do fish, like other animals, eventually give up and stop trying to swim? We used a virtual reality behavioral assay wherein paralyzed fish received a constant drive to swim while we monitored their motor output with electrophysiology. This virtual reality paradigm gives us control over how the fish's actions are connected to the visual scene. In the closed loop condition, the fish's motor output was used to move the visual stimulus backwards, simulating the visual scene a fish would experience if it were actually swimming. In the open loop condition, the fish's motor output had no effect whatsoever on the visual scene, which simulates the experience of being swept away by inexorable water flow or trapped in mud or the jaws of a predator. In closed loop, the fish swim regularly at about once per second, but in open loop without any visual feedback, something very different happens. Fish initially increase the vigor of their attempts and then abruptly stop swimming for tens of seconds, only to resume their efforts sometime later. We call this behavior futility-induced passivity. Over hundreds of seconds in open loop, fish alternated between these active and passive behavioral states, as if they were trying hard, giving up, and trying again. This allowed us to study how the nervous system generates these two very different behavioral states. In search of the neuronal and astroglial basis of futility-induced passivity, we performed the whole brain light sheet imaging in both neurons and a glial cell type called radial astrocytes during behavior. First, fish swam in closed loop with alternating periods of stimulus on and stimulus off. Then the environment was switched to open loop where visual feedback was withheld. Futility-induced passivity was accompanied by calcium increases in radio astrocytes, which could spread across large areas of the brain. Analyzing this data, we found that an astroglial population was particularly reliably activated at the onset of passivity. This population in the lateral medulla oblongata, or ELMO, showed strong calcium increases whenever the fish became passive in open loop. In closed loop, these calcium increases in glial processes were far weaker. Furthermore, the calcium increases began after the fish started swimming in open loop, kept rising as the animal kept trying to swim, and peaked right after the animal gave up. This pattern of activity suggested that the radio astrocytes with processes in ELMO may accumulate swim failures and eventually implement swim suppression. We tested this using a variety of approaches, all of which showed that ELMO projecting radio astrocytes were necessary for futility-induced passivity, and that when activated, they could induce the passive behavioral state. Where did the calcium increases in the glia come from? We searched for the neurons that drive the calcium increases in astrocytes. We discover a role for the noradrenergic population, called the noradrenergic cluster of the medulla oblongata. These cells detect swim failures, that is, swim bouts that do not lead to backward visual flow. We also discovered a population of GABAergic output neurons that are driven by radial astrocytes. This leads to the following circuit. Under normal circumstances, when the fish swims and receives visual feedback, the circuit is not particularly engaged. But if the visual feedback from actions is withheld because the animal gets stuck, or in our case because the experimenter switched the virtual environment to open loop, then noradrenergic neurons encode the sensory motor mismatch. If this continues, then radio astrocytes integrate their noradrenergic inputs, representing the accumulated evidence that the actions are futile. Once the glial calcium levels reach a critical level, they excite GABAergic neurons that eventually suppress motor output, causing the animal to become passive. Excitation of radial astrocytes may affect more than just the GABAergic neurons shown here. For example, radial astrocytes may directly suppress premotor circuits. 
In this way, neuronal and glial cell types can work in concert to turn an animal's repeated experiences into long-lasting change in behavioral state. The discovery of this computation in glial cells implies that astrocytes in fish and other animals may perform more information processing functions previously only ascribed to neurons.